This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to Peter, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister. Can't you just hear the gears grinding inside Peter's mind? Jesus is teaching about forgiveness and Peter has some follow-up questions. How many times should I forgive? How much forgiveness should I share? What's the limit on forgiveness before it runs out? Peter is trying to calculate forgiveness. His question to Jesus is an attempt to turn forgiveness into an equation, a formula, a rule to be followed. But Jesus doesn't want Peter or any of us to think about forgiveness in that way. The answer Jesus gives and the parable he tells are meant to show us that forgiveness is not a calculation. How many times should you forgive, Peter? I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. It's interesting, some ancient manuscripts of the Bible have Jesus say 77 times, and others have Jesus saying seven times 70, like 490 times. But the point is not the exact number. The point is it's a lot of times. It's like when I was a kid, and, and boys would try to outdo each other by saying things like, our team is going to score a million points on your team. Well, our team is going to score infinity points on your team. And everybody knew what the ultimate gotcha response was. We're going to score infinity plus one. <laughs> whatever you think the number could be whatever the highest number you can think of it's more than that infinity plus one and that's kind of what Jesus is saying to Peter Peter says okay Jesus you want me to forgive my brother like a million times and Jesus says no I tell you infinity times plus one Forgiveness is not a calculation. It's not about, not about keeping track of the offenses and the forgivenesses and making sure that the equation balances out. 
That's what we try to do sometimes by remembering hurts and keeping grudges. But Jesus wants Peter and all who follow him to know that forgiveness is based on something different, something more. And that's what this parable Jesus tells is all about. This is a parable about the ridiculousness of trying to calculate forgiveness. Life with God, Jesus says, is like a king who had this servant who owed him 10,000 talents. And by comparison, this servant was owed by someone else 100 denarii. Now, you probably aren't up to speed on the current exchange rate for talents and denarii, so let's just put this in our terms. A talent was something like 15 years worth of wage for an average worker. So 15 years of wages times... So in order to pay off this debt, the servant would need to work for 150,000 years. That's what 10,000 talents is. It's like the entire U.S. national debt. This is what is owed to the king, and there's absolutely no way the servant could ever pay him back. And then there's 100 denarii. The denarii was about an average daily wage for a worker. If you did a day's worth of work, you'd probably get a denarii. And the servant is owed 100 denarii by this other servant. 100 days worth of wages. So that's 100 denarii. It's like the amount I owe on my credit card, which is a lot more than I wish it was, but still is a manageable amount. And so as the parable goes, that servant is forgiven this exorbitant amount of debt by the king, and yet, after that, he refuses to give a much, much smaller amount owed to him by his fellow servant. And therein lies the problem. It makes no sense to plead for mercy and rely on the forgiveness of the one to whom you owe so, so much. And then not show mercy and forgive the one who owes you far, far less. If we try to put that into some sort of formula, well, this system just falls apart. And that's Jesus' point, really, is not... Instead, forgiveness is a transformation. Forgiveness is a transformation. What Jesus, in his words to Peter and in this parable, is saying is that it's a recognition that our forgiveness, our forgiveness, is based on God's forgiveness. Enormous debt disobedience and idolatry and selfishness, this sin is an enormous debt, a debt we could never, ever repay or make amends for on our own. And yet God forgives us. Out of love and mercy, God forgives. And because God has done this, we are to be transformed. Transformed into forgiving people. The parable, well, it shows a really bad example of that. Shows how that servant in this little story gets things entirely wrong. And by showing us the picture of how not to do things, Jesus is giving us an image of the right way to do things. You have been forgiven. Therefore, be transformed into one who forgives. Now, I think this makes sense to us in theory, right? We hear the servant in the story doesn't forget as he's been and we know that's not right. We hear God wants us to forgive and we know that sounds like God's way of things. It's just hard to actually do that. It's hard to forgive. But here's where Jesus' teaching on forgiveness is such, such a great gift. Because what Jesus shows us is that forgiveness means what has happened in the past doesn't have to define what the future will be. What has happened in the past 
doesn't have to define what the future will be. The servant in the parable who owed 10,000 talents, if that debt had stayed with him, it would have defined him for the rest of his life. Whatever he had done to get himself into such trouble, he would have remained under the burden of those actions and under the weight of that debt forever. But, he is forgiven. And he is released from it. And that's what forgiveness is. The lifting of a burden. The refusal to allow past actions and failures to define the future. And this applies not just to financial debts like in the parable, but especially to hurts and betrayals like the ones we have. You know that when someone does something to you to harm you, if you hang on to that anger and resentment, it becomes a weight you carry with you everywhere. Or if you have done something awful to someone else and you have not asked for forgiveness or received forgiveness for that thing, you feel like you are trapped under the burden of your actions. But when there is forgiveness, the weight and the burdens of the past are lifted so that a new future, a life defined by new possibilities, can begin. Not seven times, but seventy times seven times seven. Infinity plus one. That is the way of forgiveness for one who has to live that kind of transformed life done for Jesus has rescued us the spirit has been poured out upon us and God has forgiven us therefore let us be about the work of forgiving others amen